Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of our tactic test series. So today we have another real life recreation. We're going to be looking at Chubby Alonzo's 3421, as you guys can see on the left here. Um before we do start, I will preface this with a slight hiccup. Um I when I test, I usually check back in January to do some looking at things, see how stuff goes before the window. Um, not that I ever make any moves because I just sim the whole thing, but I like to look and just kind of see halfway point, check some stuff out, see if I need to make adjustments, just, you know, test. Frimpong leaves. So I signed someone instead. Um, I always forget his name, but he's from Fenabache. I signed someone to replace him. It's the only change that's ever been made of tax fee. It's the first time I've actually made a signing for the team. Um, I legitimately just typed in uh, right wing back. To the scouting network i just typed in right wing back that's interested in joining clicked recommendations went to the first guy on the list signed him that's legitimately all i did so i went off hey this is what the game is scouted already because i don't i have the ai do all the scouting for me um i, I literally give them full control of the ai so they did that for me they did all that they got uh the number one recommendation which i found was him then i just did the paperwork pretty much he was signed and he replaced from punk but sucks because from punk's production in the first half of the season was on another level i think the man was on was set for 25 or 26 assists on the season and a few goals and change he was unreal but with that being said that's the only change we've made to it this is the tactic we're going to be running we're going to talk through everything talk the analysis all this stuff like that um i'll talk about a slight variant that i did make to it um as well which i thought had some success too it's just slightly different uh on balanced mentality we go with positive normally so I'll, I'll discuss that one too, but there, I mainly only use this one. Uh, so this is kind of how it is. The other test also won the league, uh, as much as this, but we'll talk about both. We'll talk about everything as we go through stuff, but let's get into how the team plays, what all that does st stuff does. And, uh, yeah, all that fun stuff. <laughs> So everyone, time for tactical analysis. Um, this will be a little shorter because I want to focus on some statistics and things like that for the later bit when we talk the tactic. So I don't want to bore you guys too much and make this crazy, crazy long. I want to try to keep these 30 to 40 minutes. I don't want to go too far over that. Uh, just something I want to try to focus on for the future. So just a heads up, this might be a little shorter than we're normally used to. But Chabi Alonso, we all know the man has been probably one of the smartest footballers we've ever seen grace the pitch. He's unreal. He has learned from so many different amazing managers. I can think of Barino. I can think of Angelotti. I can think of Pep. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Uh, Rafa Benitez. There's another. Um, sure, some uh, probably Del Bosque as well uh, for Spain. I mean, the, the list of people is endless that he's played under and learned amazing stuff from. So, I mean, it's just insane. Um, and I'm sure if we could come up with more, but he, he knows so much and he's learned so much from so many amazing people over his career. He's probably learned from Pep too, for all we know, because of Spain and, and just playing and stuff. But there's so many amazing things that you can see in his style. And he's such an amalgamation of all these guys he's learned from and different things around the world, from relationism around Deniz that we know about, just one thing we've talked about on the channel, to many other things like that. And it's created this really interesting system that focuses on a lot of things that are... I'd say your focus more on passing. Um, I mean, like passing combinations are really, really important in this team. Um, and he looks to constantly create good ways for his team to pass and create passing angles. They're really high in amount of one twos. They're really high in possession passes, completion percentage and passes as well. So there's tons and tons of those things for this team in, in terms of the way they play in real life. But also what's interesting is the fact that there is no real set structure for things. Always there's freedom of movement at times. And to me, I find that really interesting because we think of a lot of very high possession teams as being quite positionally oriented, a strong set of system and set of movements off the ball, things like that. We think of Pep, who tends to be quite strict in his positional structures. There's a lot of set rotations. Obviously, there's rotations, but there's set things that occur. We know they will occur. They're not as much about things like uh, freedom of movement or things like that, which is interesting to me. And so I, I just found this a kind of an interesting topic looking at those two things. It's definitely something to be discussed and looked at further. We're not going to talk about it in this video, but something interesting that I felt showed and was viewable through the way that Chavi Alonso likes his team to set up and play. 
Now, one of the key things as well that I think we need to talk about is his change in style of play once the team moves around the pitch. The team has various different styles of position, of positioning, as well as movement speed of the ball, as and the understanding of what they're trying to do in those areas that make the team quite difficult to deal with. They use space really well. They use speed. They use uh, momentum, speeding up the play, slowing down the play really well. And they use directness really well too. They're really smart about when they can be direct, when they're not supposed to be direct. And they're great at having players move off the ball and find spaces to then create these direct moments of play and be really smart with it, which is why you see a lot of one-twos and a lot of chances being created through through balls, which is another key thing this team does like to do. So with that being said, I think the first thing we need to start off with is the way the team builds out, because this is quite interesting. It's not something we've been able to recreate in FM, as you'll see why it's not possible in FM, but it's something really interesting. So one of the things to know about his system is that Chabi Alonso likes to have his team become a 4-2-3-1. This is a lopsided kind of 4-2-3-1 because it'll look more like this. Um, but this is kind of how it will look. So this is legitimately what his team will look like when they're building out at times. Then these guys are a little further off and same with these guys. This is what the team will look like. So say the ball is going to go to the right side, right? So uh, Herdeki, or I always screw up his name. If he gets it, he's going to play it here, okay? This is what the team's going to look like. And these are the positions the way the players are. They set up in a 4-2-3-1. So you got your 4, sorry, you got your, your a 2-4-3-1, but you really have a 4 it's really a 4-2-3-1. Everyone knows most teams build out, push the wingbacks high, yada, yada, yada. This is, this is child's play in terms of wingbacks being pushed high. You guys know this by now. Um, well, if you don't, very common tactic in terms of way four builds out, push the wingbacks high, you get a two build out system. Da 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 da. 2-4 system, really, really common for all of football. So they'll usually push this wide here. Now the first pass can be out here, or it can be into the six who then looks to create combination plays. But this is kind of the main, one of the main shapes they look to do in build out, especially for short. This can obviously be adjusted, but almost every time Frempong is the one that is pushed high and wide to be the right winger in the system. Grimaldo stays and is the left back. This is so, so, so common and happens constantly. And this needs to be, need to realize this because they will do it a lot. And you want to encourage your team to do this in buildup while playing with the system because it makes a really big difference and helps drastically. Now, you could help deal with this by having this guy drift wide, this guy stay central, and this guy invert. That is possible, but it doesn't work for the rest of the tactics, so I didn't do that. That's if you wanted to do some weird thing where you have one thing for the build out, and that's just probably a little too much. But that's kind of one of the main things they do. They then, from this position, look to play one twos to get things down the line. So they usually they might play here, or they might play they might play wide. This guy will come over. He'll get it to him. He'll then maybe play it back. The striker will then maybe drop in. They'll look they'll go long into the striker. He'll knock it down to a player here and get this guy in behind. Boom! He's running in behind. You've runners here, runners, runners here, runners. Then coming in behind. He's running down the line, he cuts it across, someone scores. And that's exactly what you'll see, is they can be super, super quick with it. That's A lot of times when they go down the right side, they tend to be really direct, getting the ball uh, into the center mid before he lays it back off to the center back, or he gets it in turns and plays it somewhere else. And they try to get it down the line super, super quickly on this right side, because with Frimpong on the right, it's a lot more direct, a lot more of quick attack, super fast, direct play, getting it down the line so we can drive through, cross. Because if you get Frimpong in space, Almost no one in world football besides probably Alfonso Davies is catching that man. Like, he's outrageously fast to the point you're good luck catching him. Um, the other thing they'll do, if they build up to the left, which is their more common one, Tapsoba is almost the number one used player in terms of touches on the defense and passing. He will usually get it and look to dribble the ball slightly forwards before looking to pass out wide or inside. Now, when they go to this side with Grimaldo or Xhaka, it's a lot more based around possession. The team will look to possess it more. They'll take their time. They'll pass it here. They'll have the movement. Verts will usually drift wide. Uh, the Hoffman usually comes across. The striker usually stays within the half spaces, sitting uh, to occupy one of the two center backs. Very common because he looks to be a bit of a link player where if it's played into him, he lays it off before making runs in behind. So he'll lay it off and go so they can play the ball into him. Just something that he does a lot. 
This guy will probably invert over here. You'll probably have this guy kind of invert in a little more, and you'll start to see their, their uh, 3 2 5 shape start to develop. But they'll start possessing the ball, and you'll start seeing guys kind of drifting over into these areas, being more of an option here. He'll kind of stay wide, but they'll start coming over here and being op options for people to play into, right? They'll start trying to possess the ball. They'll move it around, they'll pass like this, pass it around here, looking to get the ball down the line through passes and movement to transition them into this attacking area and attacking third, where they want to then do more. And the big thing too is this opposite wide player will stay far high and wide. This occurs on the other side too, but usually on the right, it's more common. And you'll see the team develop and move forwards, and you'll eventually start to see this 3-2-5 shape start to develop around the middle of the pitch. Normally here, it's more of like a 3-4-3 three, three that kind of occurs, where the wing backs are kind of in these like middle areas here. You have the back three, which tends to be actually quite narrow. They're quite a narrow back three. And then you have the front three, which really does kind of become a front three of players. You normally have them more kind of like this. It'll kind of look like this a lot. And you'll have this system here, and there'll be a lot more combination play between these kind of four players. You'll see somewhat of a box between these four created pretty commonly. And they'll be looking to find passing angles and passing opportunities for them to get into where they can then get the ball into these areas out wide here for these players to attack into and get crosses off into. That'll be pretty common. You'll see that a lot. Where in possession, the team will look to build through these guys here. Maybe they'll go back and then wide. But normally these guys here, with kind of these two having a freedom of movement, right? So these, these two players having a lot of freedom of movement to move and drift around to find these vertical passing lanes they can play into. And Flacios also will come forwards. He'll move forwards beyond Jaka at times as well. He'll go up and create a, a staggered... Uh, a, he'll help be able to stagger the defensive line and allow Jaka to be able to break lines through passes so they can create kind of a staircase like that, allowing them to get forwards and get into spaces where they can get the ball out wide. And you can see this a lot more in the final third where these areas here are really, really important for Leverkusen in how they attack, because these areas are the wingbacks. This is their zone. These guys here will get into these areas to support, but, but if the ball's on this left side, which is much more common, you will really see this shape become that five. It'll be so, so common. You'll see it here. You'll have stuff kind of pretty much looking like this. This guy will usually be a little wider to help support. And this is probably what you'll see a lot. And this is a very, we see this shape in our goal that we score, as well as the shape that they score against Leipzig, the goal that I have. There'll be a lot of combination play here where these guys are working on little one twos of maybe playing it into here, playing it off to here, and then boom, getting it wide. There'll be a lot of combination play in this area here. This is really, really crucial. Now we talked about, and the one thing I want to mention is the team is very central. They will look to this middle area of the pitch this is super common. The build-up play occurs in this central area here a lot, right? The team looks to go wide in these areas when building out. So it's these areas when building out, right? It's this area when going forwards, right? So this, is, this makes sense. So to you guys, this is the area they look to build through the middle. This area is they look to build out wide. It's these areas here. Like, this is how the team looks to play normally, with these areas being really key. I'll do that. These are the areas the team looks to play in. And I guarantee if you look to the common heat map of, like, the ball and stuff for these players, this is going to be the key spots. It's these five, six areas. Build up through here, go wide, go back centrally, go back out wide, and finish in this area here. That's what you will see with this team. That's a really good way to look at it is starts here, goes one of these two, goes into here, goes one of these two, and gets finished off here. And that's really, really important to know with this team because that's what you will see. There will be lots of times where they'll play the ball around in these areas, clip it out wide, boom, cross is hit in low. There's a player drifting in here that is able to get on the back of it because these guys are all here, all occupying all the defenders. No one's paying attention to this guy on the back post. Boom, tap it. And you will see that time and time again from this team. You will see the 3-2-5 shape. You will see the 3-4-3 three, three shape. But you will, and you will always be the wingbacks wide 
on the touchline as far wide as they can, always in space, because they're always looking to get the ball into those areas. Now, it's a little common, a little more common to see the ball played and to be the ball switched as well. So say they're kind of in these this area here in the middle of the pitch. You'll see this sometimes, where say they're all kind of pushed over here, so they they got it versus maybe out wide. Grimaldo's kind of over here right now. Grimaldo won't always be advanced as um as Frimpong, but he does like to get forwards. Striker's kind of in this half space. This guy's kind of over here a little bit. DM Jaka's maybe a little more forwards, looking to get the ball there. There will be times where they're in this space here, or maybe a little deeper. Actually, we'll say because this probably is a little deeper for this. Um where they will just ping this ball out wide here. Like, they'll just go for this direct through ball here into space where then he can drive at people because he's also got this guy kind of drifted over where if he gets it first touch, there's a chance he plays he plays this and then he runs like this and that next pass is like that. So, gets it, plays it here, he gets it, he runs, he lays it off, boom, he's on a goal. And you'll see that too. The direct pass out wide from Xhaka into this area here. Let's uh, fix this. You'll see this pass. Which leads to this pass, which leads to that boom goal. And you will see that happen. That occurs with this team. They will ping it wide. So those players have a 2v1 against the wide player and they're gone. And this will happen as well. It's not as common, but it does happen. If they're building on this side and there's a lot of defensive pressure, they will use this as a release valve. It's not as common because it's a riskier pass, but it does occur too. Um, just something to be wary of, which is why we have pass into space on, because if we want them to pass into these areas where there's space for players to get into. Now, finally, the last thing we need to talk about is their man-orientated pressing system. This is really, really key, really important to the way they do things because they're super, super big on this. So with this uh, this shape in terms of it, the, the team looks to be highly aggressive and force the ball out wide. So let's get a defense in here and we can show you how they would mark and match up against one of these defenses. Go red because that's pretty clear. Ah, we don't need an arrow. Let's move it back to this. So we don't have any problems. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, there we go. We're getting everyone in now. We're we're making it happen. Boom. Okay. My God, it looks way more claustrophobic. Um. So, you'll see usually if they're starting, say, with a goal kick, right? So, they'll be here, probably here. This guy will start on the edge. These guys will start ready to go. These guys will probably step up to these guys here. They'll leave the 10 somewhat free. They'll usually probably press here. One of these guys might step up more here, ready. He's ready to step. But they'll be pretty aggressive, right? They'll be kind of like, they'll be kind of waiting. Might not be as much on those guys, but they'll be ready to go and waiting for this ball. The ball will then be played short, right? So it's played short. One will go, cutting off this pass immediately, forcing this ball wide, right? They'll kind of sit off here. Verts will sit off here, waiting to know what he wants to do. He'll come here. He'll try to sit off a bit. This pass back here, they'll go after him. He'll be covering someone here. He'll be covering someone here. They're going to then encourage this ball to this guy. They'll leave this guy free. They'll be happy to leave him free because they've got everyone else marked downfield. So if they go hit this long, covered, 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 all oh, man. So they'll encourage this guy to clip this ball out wide here. Now he'll press. Now he'll come press. Now he'll come press. And again, they encourage this long clipped ball here. They'll force you out wide again, but they'll let you go back. So they'll they'll leave the goalkeeper, right? They'll leave the goalkeeper. They'll be waiting on this guy here. They'll be ready to press either one. So he'll kind of sit in between. They go to the goalkeeper. He'll come press the goalkeeper. Goalkeeper's forced to go short. Now he's coming after him. He's like, oh shit, I got the ball. Everyone's covered. He's going to have to pump it long down the line. This guy can get it and clear it, or he can get it if it overruns, plays it back to the goalkeeper, or nod it down to someone. And that's what you'll see a lot, is that they will encourage the ball wide. They'll say, hey, you can go backwards to your goalkeeper or down the line into a ton of people that we've man-marked. Or, or I'll tackle you. One of the two options. You, you can... They'll force you wide. You'll say, hey, you can either get tackled by me, go long, or go backwards. Okay, cool. 
You want to go backwards? Well, backwards, you can make a long clip across your box to someone. Very dangerous ball across the defense. Or you can go back to your goalkeeper. Most people go, I'll go back to my goalkeeper. Goalkeeper swings it out to the guy that's open. Same scenario. You want to go down the line to everyone covered or go back to your goalkeeper or try a dangerous clip across. All right. And then eventually you get it into one of the scenarios where maybe this guy's standing off a little bit because this guy's gone far or wide. He's got the ball here. He goes, hey, this guy's open. Let me try to ping this long ball. Thank you. Snags it and he's good to go. And that's one thing you'll see is that sometimes the wingbacks will sit off a little bit waiting for that wing ball, that ball out wide. They'll snag it and they'll go because they're kind of baiting it a bit too. They'll bait it back out wide with it standing off a little trigger pressed. Once it's gone, boom, they go win it gone into the attacking half and they try to score goals. So we're going to see some of those examples through FM and that we'll start with the build out. Just start with the simple stuff. Start from there. Keep going forward. Just to go build out goal and pressing, but that's how they do it. The team also normally plays with a very, very high line, very aggressive, very counter press, counter, counter press aggressive. You'll see that as well on both things. But the team is super high, highly attacking, highly aggressive, lots of possession, lots of goals, lots of uh, lots of stuff being played in the opposing half, and they're fun to watch. They're great to play with, and I just wish I got a lip. The tactics is not totally there. It's like ninety percent of the way there. I just couldn't figure out the final bit and get it to work right. So. Do apologize for that, but it's it's so close. It's so close. So first example we're going to start with is the build out from the back. So as you can see, which is pretty similar to the other clip I did, uh, we're going to look at uh, shortly is the way the team looks in terms of the build not behind goal is the team how the team tends to look in build out. So this one is a bit more of a kind of basic rudimentary build out, but you can uh, see it occur at times in terms of the two kind of four, f the, uh, sorry, the four, two, three, one build out, which you can kind of see here. This one looks more like a four, three, three. Um, this player is not as deep as I'd kind of want him to be <coughs> in terms of that setup there. But normally you'll look to see uh, the two players here in terms of the wingbacks really high and wide. You want to see these two players kind of together here, but the the way they the that center real life is the left center back is here, the right center back is he, the right center back is out here, the left the central center back is in this position here. Unfortunately, you can't do that in FM. That just isn't possible at all. But it's similar enough to the way they build out. But the ideas are similar. So you'll see in the clip later on. But you'll see what I'm talking about. So here they go short. Now they look to play forwards, and they'll look to play down the line, and they'll look to go quick to get it into space down the line so they can counterattack. They lose it here in the middle, which is unfortunate, but it's one of the things here in terms of the way they create the shape that I really want us to focus on, because that's similar to what you'll see in terms of the normal build-out, is once this is built out here, the team is now almost in a four, almost two, three and then one shape, which is kind of the big thing we are looking for with it. But the other thing is, is that the team will also have a three, two, five or three, two, four, one shape a lot of the time, which is the back three here, the two center mids, the, the wing backs, the two tens and the striker in this kind of shape here, where they look to attack from where these guys are the main ones. They're looking to exploit the space out wide. They're looking to get the ball into these areas here where they can run onto it and they get across into some of these three central players, which you see. Now, Hoffman loses the ball through the poor touch. Normally, you'd look to see him to try to get it out into this space. But something to look at, just kind of that shape that we're seeing, which is quite important there. Not the most perfect thing, but again, it's something you can't do in, in FM that you can do in real life. Now, finally, we're going to take a look at the goal kicks. So for this one, as I did mention to start, I said you'll usually see the two players in these areas. This time, though, they're building out in a... 2-4 shape, which is slightly different. Not always what they do, but a little different from what they're normally doing. This time they go direct out to the right center back here, as Grimaldo's over there. As I remember I mentioned in the in the analysis beforehand, one of the things they do is that they have the right back push really, really high, and it looks like a 4-2-3-1 in build-out. So they have the 2-4 shape for the build-out, where they push the wing backs high, those wingers stay, those guys stay up, so you'll see that shape what I'm, is what I'm talking about. You'll see it a lot. But this is, you see it here. So you see the three with the, the goalkeeper and those two. Now you see these guys, which is the two, four shape. And it goes out to the right side. He looks, finds the center midfielder in Falacios, who's tucked in. Now you see, here's the right wing back. 
and here's the 10 dropping in. This is that 4 2 3 1 shape we're talking about. Goes down the line, it's flicked forwards from the striker, and they almost have an opportunity here to get from Punk down the line and in. Sadly, it's picked off, but it's a great example to show you guys in terms of what they do in their build out when they go down this one on the right. Just can't get it right. But the opportunity is there with that 4 2 3 1 build out shape they have to really get quickly down that right side. Right now, we're going to take a look at some of the pressing and counter pressing that occurs. So the team's in possession here. Verts has it, and he tries to make a pass, but loses it. We now see the team initially start their counter press. So you see their shape that they're in. They're in the three. They're in the three, four, two, one. Pretty clear here. But you'll see the team adopt. They'll sw swiftly come out of their shape and pretty man orientated press. And you can see the man orientated system already. One, two, three, all marked by man. Here, Verts is the closest. Normally, you'd be looking to push up on here. But that's okay because they we have an extra player here in case something happens. But man, man, this guy's a little free. Man here again and man here again. So now, which you'll see in the clip where, Leips, where Leverkusen looked to force the ball backwards and then wide. And that's what they're hoping for. Here's forcing it backwards. He's got the back option. And now he's going to have to go back to the goalkeeper if he goes back. Where then he has to go wide with a long ball wide, which is crucial. Long ball wide where they're all going to be man marked. Meaning the long ball is to a marked player who will usually lose the ball. You can see this right happen here. He goes. Now look. Verts goes to here. Now Stanisic can go to here. But again, man marked. M man, man marked. Man marked. He's got to play the risky long ball here, which he can then look to get. Or... He can go into one of these guys. They're all man-marked, and there's an extra player. They try to go here. Now look, man-mark again, man-mark again. Risky balls to all these marked players, and he's the only one that's open. But guess what? He's open. Hoffman can go and press. So look, he goes there. Now Hoffman's going to go. It's a little late, but he goes there. Unfortunately, Grimaldo, don't know what he's doing here. Not the smartest, but still, he can step. He can put pressure. Now Hoffman comes and presses to force them back even further. And guess what? Vert is going to mark off the middle here, and they're going to be forced to go backwards again. They can try to go forwards, but boom, they have man covering. They're going to be forced to go vert backwards. Verts is here. Now you got to play the risky ball here. Goes forwards. It's a risky long ball. Stanisic gets it because they're man marked, and we win the ball back. And that's what I'm talking about. They force you backwards. There's men covering everyone across the pitch. Really tightly man marked system. Force you backwards. They press you back. They press you wide. And then you're forced to hit a long ball because you know where else to go besides backwards. And it gets picked off. And that's a great example of how the team does it. And it's a great way to show you what they do here and in real life, where you'll see them do very similar things in terms of forcing back, forcing wide, and forcing the ball long. So here is a great example, and the ball ends up rolling out of bounds. Perfect for what they're looking to do. They're not able to get much done off of it, and it's just really high-intensity pressing, forcing them back, then forcing them to a wide area where they have to play a long ball. They can't play through you. Here is our next clip, which we're looking at a goal that was scored. So we can see one of the things which I was talking about in terms of the, the team. In terms of this possession already, you can start to see it. You can see the three. You can see part of the uh you can see kind of the two and then you can see that group of five that we talked about you can see it developing again and again and you can really see one of the big things here in terms of the three five two no the three two five but the the with it is the wide wing max as we're going to keep talking about with this thing it's just super important with this team is the use of these players to be in high and wide positions being able to cross the ball and have players like this making backside runs into open space you see this guy he's focused on the people in front of him here right he's not looking or marking this guy meaning he has tons of space to run into right here which is really important now the other thing we're talking about is here is that the use of these kind of quick one twos and these central player the balls to these central players to get the balls out wide like uh Leverkusen are really, really high in terms of the amount of one twos that are played as well which is super important to worry uh, to be focused on because they like to go quick with some of their passes and you can see it here too because these guys are pinning the ball pinning these players back pushing them high meaning that there's room for these guys to receive and now space out wide look at the gaps out wide here tons so you'll see what Jaka does which is he gets it chance clips it out wide to Grimaldo you'll see too in the clip that we play later that it's created through dribbling into a central area here where the player makes the pass from this angle out wide to the winger uh, to the wing back making the uh run as well so you'll see it there but grimaldo gets it and now makes the cross this time though 
Stanisic is not making a run into the box, but we have bodies in the box here. We have both the 10 and the striker. We have the other 10 here, and we have players as well in support on the top of the box with the six getting there. So as the other six here for a cutback, and this guy here to clean up anything on the back post comes in, Schick rises high and headers in the ball, which is lovely to see as he's a great aerial threat. But it's just stuff to look at in terms of the team builds in the attacking half with that 3-2-5 shape. They have the player out wide on the wing so that they're able to get the get the balls out wide for crosses. They have the other player who comes in at the back post to try to get in position to score a goal and theirs to cover, as well as having the strikers and the 10 making runs of the box where there's tons of bodies. They're also, which the other thing we do should mention too, is look how heavily skewed this team is to this left side. If we took a took a slice from right here and cut it all the way through, this whole right side of the pitch pretty much is occupied by two players for, for Leverkusen. The left is occupied by everyone else. So because of that, you're pulling people over. You're pulling them all over there, so there's space for this stuff over here, which is the key thing to think about as well, and you'll see in the goal clip. There's so many people from Leipzig being pulled to one side of the pitch. So there's lots and lots of room on the other side. So, everyone, the final clip of the three. This time, we are going to be looking at the way the team scored a goal. So, one of the things that you guys can see here is kind of that shape I was talking about at times with the 3-5-2 or the 4, um, kind of the 4-2-3-1. It's not either of them, but you can kind of see at times what I am slightly talking about, though. You have the back three here, which has maintained their shape in terms of possession. You have some of the central midfielders here as well. This is Flacius and Jaka together. And then you also have one of the 10. So you can see what I'm talking about. There we go. So you can see you have the striker there. You have the two uh, the two sixes here, the left back and the 10 here. So just kind of giving you an idea of how the team is set up. You have that three, two, five kind of set up right now because you have Frimpong and the other players over to the right towards now you see what I'm talking about in terms of that five. You got the three back there, the two over here, and there's that five players. Now, though, we have that one link player who gets the ball and plays it out wide to the wing back who is in that wide space. There, Remember I mentioned about you want to make sure with this five, they're able to get players really, really far wide in space. So they have the opportunity to cross, and one, they, the, uh, one, they have the opportunity to cross from that wing, and the other, the other can make a blindside run and tap in the ball at the back post. Now, see here, we have that little link player giving that ball off. Now, as, I sh as I'm showing here, they have the three players in the box. These two are all the occupying people. Leipzig are so concerned about all these players here. They have all these people bunched up. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're all concerned about these guys. No one's looking at Frimpong. Frimpong's all on his own. Happy as could be. And Grimaldo's like, I see you. I got you. And look at this. Puts a perfectly placed ball, which I think in the end is actually aimed at Schick, right to Frimpong on the back post. And the keeper's like, what the fuck, guys? Who's covering him? And that's exactly what, you've, what we've talked about a little bit in terms of the way. Getting the ball to the back post, how the shape works in the middle. You see that that one, again, we'll just go back to it quickly, but you see that shape, the three, two, five here with all the bodies. You see all the people in the box pulling everyone to one side. That wing back sits on the opposite side in space out wide, able to tap in at the back post. Exactly what we talked about in the analysis and perfectly demonstrated by this Leipzig side. Not Leipzig, by this Leverkusen side against Leipzig. Okay, everyone. So first things that I did want to talk about was... Oh, crap, I just took down my stats page. Um, Sorry, I have some stats up because I want to talk about those. Uh, The first thing I want to talk about first when the team performance is obviously the fact that we had the best defense in the league as well as the best attack now that's not something i would expect from this team so far as i don't think they've actually had the best defense but it's just something that's been pretty interesting to me and i was quite kind of excited by and i thought was pretty sweet to have that with this tactical setup now if we do look schick had 25 goals grimaldo the highest average rating the most assists tapsoba the best pass completion percentage Bert's most player of the matches, Flacios picking up lots of yellow and red cards. Um, that Andrek red card is quite hilarious as well. But uh, team of the best goals, 70, 70 goals, least allowed with 27, eighth most uh, yellows, and third worst in terms of uh, the red cards. So somewhat similar, somewhat not, but you know, it's how thing goes. In real life, though, the player with the most assists is Grimaldo. And so it's pretty similar to real life. Uh, and if we go to the squad page first, just look at some things we can see that Grimaldo was next, then it was Verts. Then in real life, it's Boniface before Fringpong and Hoffman. But next is Hoffman, 
And then you get into the central midfielders, which after this you see start seeing Falacios and Adley and some other and people like that. So in reality, it's actually quite similar to how it did work in real life. The strikers didn't get as many assists as I was hoping. The tens did more of the assisting. But as you can see, it's really similar in that sense. We even look at the goals. Grimaldo had, has seven goals. Um, so we look at the goals here. The next group are Verts, Brimpong, Hoffman. We can see that here. Uh, Boniface and Schick as well. Tapsoba took the penalties for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but then Verts, Grimaldo. Then you can see players like Palacios, which is down there as well, then center back. So it really does mirror real life in terms of who's getting the goals, the players getting them, which is really good to see. So that's really key. We are mirroring a real life tactic, regardless of the results on the pitch. I mean, sorry, regardless of the results in terms of where they finish in the league, we are looking to get the most realistic in terms of the player statistics and things like that. And that's what we are getting. We're getting very similar stuff in terms of these, which I'm really happy to see. Now, uh, some of the big things also that I do want to talk about is the performance of the team. They were really, really good. And also ended up pulling off the most Leverkusen-esque finishes I've ever seen. Now, if you don't know, Leverkusen, for some reason, has like a history of losing in finals. Uh, do correct me for all the finals they lost. I don't remember the top of my head, but I think they've lost like... They had one season where they lost the Bundesliga, the DFB Pokal, and the Champions League final all in one season. Like, they lost the league on the last day or the second to last day, the Champions League final, and the DFB Pokal final. So I think they lost all three the same season. It's like the craziest thing. Zidane's famous goals against Leverkusen in the Champions League. That's the season. Um, maybe not, but I feel like that is. But So we had a similar kind of thing. Semi-final loss to Bayern. Semi-final loss to Liverpool. But we did win the league, which is kind of nice to see. Um, if we see, they had a really, really bad stretch after losing to Bayern, which kind of killed them here. So that really sucks. Uh, besides that, they were great. With Frimpong, they were on another level. They only dropped points in one, two, three, four games in the first half of the season. And then once Frimpong left, they dropped points one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven times the second half of the season. So Frimpong made a big difference. We can also see that in terms of where is Teddy Oglu, who I did sign. Did only got two goals to assist. He did have a decent average rating through 23 games, but it's not the same as um someone like if we go here and look at Frimpong went to Chelsea, they activate his release clause. Um look here, 16 games, three goals, five assists, 7.59 average rating. So that was unreal from Frimpong. He was on another level. You can see also he had 12 assists on the season, um, on top of that. Seven in the Continental, so he was just he was killing it. Twelve assists in twenty in uh twenty four games, just on another level in terms of his production for us. So it's terrible to lose him, and it really does suck. But I didn't realize that was happening until I saw. I didn't know that was going to occur, and it's something that just is very aggravating. And he didn't agree to a contract, which made it even more difficult. Um, one thing I do want to look at, um, just some past maps. Uh, as well, just so you guys can see. Obviously, we did talk about earlier where one of the big things with Xabi Alonso is that he doesn't have a set structure always for how the team plays because they look at like a 4-2-3-1 at times. Um, really do you know, look um, almost like what was, was it? I'm already forgetting off the top of my head. <laughs> um, a 3-2-5 a three, three, at times as well in terms of when they are in the attacking half. Um, all the players forwards. But you can see it here in terms of the, the back back three helping out the right side of one being a little more a little more defensive the left side of one being a little more aggressive grimaldo pushing forward but the right back pushing even further forward the players helping out in these areas here but you can just kind of see a lot more of what the shape we're looking for is in terms of the attacking players creating those triangles out wide as well as just them being really far wide and offering those options for those attacks it's it's just really exactly what we're looking for and it's a lot of what you want to see heat maps very similar as well. Really, really wide width. This player a little deeper. This one in this hole to help. And that wing wing back really uh, really far out wide and kind of on his own doing a lot more. Well, this one is a little more connected. And that's kind of what we want to see. Because remember, these guys are kind of become the back four at times. These two are the two in the two. And then these three here become the three. And that becomes the one when you see that four, two, three, one start to happen. It's slightly angled, but you can see what I'm talking about there when they do get that in the attacking phase at times. So you can definitely see someone of the heat map here with that being said. We can also take a look at the one where, oops, sorry, clicked on the wrong button. If we go here and we look at teams and we look at um, average positions, just us, 
with the ball. Uh, let's just go to 45 minutes so you don't have to get annoyed by the subs. But you can see uh, kind of more of what I'm talking about. The player pushed really high up. If we did have Grimaldo sitting a little deeper this game, you'd see a lot more of that um, 4 2 three, one. Right now you see a lot more of the 3 2 five, which I talked about as well, which you see a lot more in the attacking phase with these players very far wide. This guy looking to come in the far post. These guys more top of the box, striker there. So it's a, it's a lot of the stuff we talked about early on. I don't need to go too deep into it. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You've talked about it. We've seen clips. Yada, yada, yada. I'm rambling. Uh, but those are just some of the things I do want to look at. On top of that, I did also want to talk about with these guys in terms of these stats, the team overview. Obviously, um, possession is really key. I only managed to get 54% of the possession, which kind of did bother me. And pass completion percent was only 89%, which aren't usually really at the numbers we want to see for these guys as they are up at right now 61% in the league, being one of the best in terms of um, possession at 61.7 per 90 as well as success rate for them being up around, uh, sorry, where I, where did I write this stat? I wrote down the dribbling stat percentage. I did not write down my tackle, my passing percentage. That's a great job, James. You really are prepared. Okay. Apologies for that. I wrote down uh, a stat, uh, the wrong stat. Uh, well, I wrote down not enough information about the stat. But they're big on pass completion percentage as well. Um, on top of that, dribbles really, really high. Um, if we do look at it, they're second most in the league as well in terms of the dribbles. So we're not not the second most, but pretty solid in terms of the amount that are done. So it's just another good thing. See, we're hitting a lot of those things that they do. Um, if we do even look at things like... <coughs> excuse me. If we look at things like shots, they are second in shots right now. If we go to um, shots four, we're first in shots, which is great to see. Shots on target. Um, I'm sure, do we have shots on target here? No, but we have tons of shots, which are really big on shots. If we go to uh, most tackles one, we're down at the bottom. If you look at real life in terms of where they are, in terms of defensive actions, Leverkusen are the dead last in terms of tackles attempted and completed. So that's another thing we're quite keen on is staying and not being too aggressive on the tackle. We do have a high tackle win percentage as well. Um, if we do look at theirs, there's uh, it's definitely a lot less, but still lots of tackles in terms of the ones we've won. They're over 50% as well, so we're in a pretty good range. But it's just some of those things to look at which we match pretty well. Um, and I'm just happy to see that if we do look at here and we go to crosses as well. 160 crosses. Um, sorry, time to go through all my stats. Here, um... Uh, where is where did, where did I save my crossing stats did I just this is the problem of going through tons and tons of different I wrote down so many things and this is very very stupid. sorry for being quite unprofessional on this one um this is my bad uh I don't know where I wrote this down oh here we go um they tend to be a little lower down in the amount of crosses uh, attempted, but um, so it I didn't write down crosses completed. Why just write down crosses attempted? Um, but we do look. We had fourteen percent, which means we probably had a lot more crosses attempted. But still, if I get out my phone and do my hand data calculator, we could see that if we do divided by point. Uh, yeah, that's definitely not right. All right. But we, we attempted a lot of crosses and stuff like that. So this is one of those things where we did attempt a lot, but it probably wasn't the most in the league. And then we didn't complete all of them. Uh, we still had a lot of cutbacks. And in, in real life, uh, Leverkusen do have the most cutbacks in the league. What did I write down? Um, so they're top in uh, cutbacks and through balls. is the mo They play the most in the league. Um, and they create the most chances of via cutbacks and through balls. So that's pretty key and quite big. Just some important things to know about when it's talking about this tactic and things to do and stuff that we are looking to create. We see a lot of through balls. We've seen some stuff already from uh, one of the clips where we have that through ball played forward to Grimaldo where he scores that, where he creates the crossing opportunity to score. Just lots of things like that, which you do see. I didn't show one of the other ones, but because that was just more the big thing was the crossing and getting those crosses played in, which is quite important. We didn't get the low cross we asked for, but as you guys will see here, we do ask for that in this. So, tactic itself. It is a 3-4-2-1 tactic. The uh, 
positive mentality, clean slate as we always are. In goal, we have Superkeeper on defend, no additional instructions. You can go Goalkeeper on defend as well. I found that the Superkeeper worked a little better to maintain some of the possession in terms of in the back um, and stuff. But again, up to you how you want to go. I don't feel there's too much of an issue with either of them. I just kind of found slightly more success when I used the Sweeper Keeper, but both roles work quite well. Uh, the other is the right wide center back on tackle harder. So the players that have the most tackles within the team are a lot, mostly the center backs. Um, if we do look at some of those statistics, um, we can look at that. Let me just go to that quickly. Uh, if we go to defensive actions and we see the players with the most tackles uh, attempted are Falacios. Grimaldo Kono, uh, Kos Kosowasu, who is the right center back, which is why we are on tackle harder for him. And then Tapsoba slightly underneath him, and then Granite Jaka before Jonathan Ta. So we can see there, there's a lot of more tackles being done. So these guys are quite big in terms of the tackles. Once it goes to Ta, it does drop off from the 20s to the 14 to 14. So just something that does occur. So I don't have him on tackle harder, but I have these two as they are much more aggressive. I also have tackle harder on Grimaldo. Uh, I don't on frame pong because Grimaldo's up there on the list. I also have it for Palacios as well as Xhaka, who are both up on the list as well. Just making sure that we encourage that aggressiveness, which we do see in midfield through the statistics. Now, obviously, the middle center back is well-playing defender, who's Jonathan Ta. On no additional instructions, nothing else is needed here. Again, right center back, wide center back support, tackle harder. Left center back on support is tackle harder and dribble more. If we do look at the statistics in terms of players the most dribbles and touches on the team, Tapsoba ranks really, really high for that. So again, which is why he's given dribble more to encourage him to take the ball, dribble a little forwards more. And also because this player here does venture forward a little bit more so that he needs to help cover the gap. Uh, the other thing I do want to mention is defensive adjustment. If you are struggling a little bit, you can change this player to a wide center back on defend. I found a lot of success using that as well and going to a more balanced mentality, bringing this player on defend to stop him going forwards. You'll have a lot more defensive cover for this right side if you're getting picked apart by it. Just something to be considerate and uh, use as well if you guys are interested in helping yourselves in kind of that mentality. But the left wing back now is a wing back on sport with cross more often to dribble more, stay wider, and tackle harder. Again, tackle hard to encourage that stuff. We want him to dribble more because he dribbles some of the most in the entire team. Uh, crosses more often. Grimaldo crosses almost more than any player on the entire team as well. And we also want him to stay wider because as we showed in the clips, we really want to encourage our wingbacks to stay high and wide to be in those crossing opportunities to be able to cross, but also to be able to make blindside runs into the box to get on the end of crosses. The right wingback is complete wingback on attack with just dribble more. Again, the right-sided player has some of the most dribbles in the team, so we want to encourage them to continue making the most dribbles and having the ball at their feet and carrying it forwards when they have the opportunity to. Now, the DM on the right defensive midfielder is the DM. This is the Falacios role. We want him to be more of a, he's more of a defensive anchor. He's there more to defend and break play up, and that's one of his big roles, Falacios. The other big thing, though, is that, which we do talk about slightly, in, in some of the clips, and I show you guys, in possession, Falacios is happy to move higher up into these positions here because the player in front of him tends to be a little higher up. So with that, he tends to move up into these areas, especially since Frimpong can become almost the right winger at times. And these guys slide over where this guy's on the left, this guy's in the middle, Frimpong's this right winger. Um, it's something that needs to be cons considered because this guy kind of shifts out to the right back role, but then he has to cover a lot of space over here. So he's happy to push up and assist at times in those areas to make to make himself more useful and kind of be a defensive anchor, but also help in possession and making runs. And you'll see that, you saw that actually in our build out as well when we talked about that. But something to be considered of, get further forward, tackle harder and mark tighter. Again, he's the more defensive anchor. He looks to mark and be aggressive, winning the ball back and helping play it off to the more uh, attacking and playmaker-like players. This is the Granite Jacker role. Defensive playmaker on support, tackle harder. Nothing additional is needed here. He is perfect for this role. A lot of these players in this team are really high level already, and we don't need to give them lots of additional instructions because one of the best parts about Javi is also he look he has a lot of relationism in his style too. He's very much more he's had so many famous managers and he's learned so much over the years that he you see lots of different types of football in his play. But the relationism kind of sense from Denise that we talked about, he lets his players move and kind of adjust and create their own structures. And that's one thing you do see in his system a little bit. There's a little more freedom than most. So because of that, we don't want to hamper these players down with so many instructions. We want to give them encouragement, but not hamper them down. So the left attacking mid is advanced playmaker on sport. This is the Verts role. 
This is tackle harder. Sheila's often going to take more risks. You could do dribble more on this as Verts does dribble the ball a lot and he is someone that is encouraged to dribble a lot. But I found if I did that, he would take the ball a lot and we wouldn't do as much with it. He would just kind of hog the ball. I don't know why that would happen, but he would just hog the ball and not play it off to these guys as much. So kind of an odd thing, but it happened, so I don't have it on. But if you have a player like Verts that probably wants to dribble more, if we take a look at the player himself, does he like to dribble? Um, runs the ball often, it will make a big difference and, and help a lot if you do have a player that does that. Uh, we also have in this role Jonas Hoffman. This is his position, the attacking midfielder on attack, the right attacking mid spot. Cross more often and tackle harder. Hoffman puts in the most crosses out of anyone on the team. Fun fact. I don't know if you knew that, but Hoffman crosses more than anyone else on the entire team. It's kind of crazy to think that. He had. He has eight. He has ninety six crosses to Grimaldo's eighty seven, and Frimpong's sixty. The the next most is eleven with Verts. Mental, but Hoffman puts in a shit ton of crosses, so he he crosses out of his mind. Um, so one thing to be considered of with all those crosses, uh, he's encouraged to cross more because we want him to cross more. Um, and then finally we also have the advance forward, dribble more, shoot more often. Uh, take the most shots, and they do have a lot of carries in them as well, so we want to encourage that. Uh, finally, down to the actual in-possession instructions, positive mentality. We have fairly narrow width. This is because we want the players to be a little more connected, but also we have pass into space selected, so they will play the ball out into kind of these channels and areas there where there should be space for players to run onto, as well as for the wingbacks to get into. We have play out of defense. Now, I do know I did mention that things get very played very centrally for this team, but I found when you had play through the middle, they didn't go to the wing backs enough. They excluded them from the play, and it caused a lot of problems. So that's why I want play through the middle. Now, we have a shorter passing directness and a slightly higher tempo. I couldn't figure out if I wanted standard or slightly higher. I felt that with standard, it was a little too much possession and not enough pizzazz. We didn't score enough. It was more of a... I, don't know, I just didn't feel they didn't get enough goals. It was too low on the goals when I had standard tempo. And they didn't have as much possession with the slightly higher, but they scored more and they were more aggressive. And that's, it was more of what I wanted to see from this team with the slightly higher tempo. on. Now, low crosses as well as we, again, they have the most cutbacks in the league. They're, they're like 14th for aerial crosses in the league. So not need to worry about having high crosses, low crosses. We again, work ball in the box is nice, but they do like to hit crosses from these areas at times a little earlier on. So we don't want to have that, but they also do like to work it in the box. So we want to leave it the freedom of their choice. Finally, run defense. The team does like to dribble. They have lots of dribbles and lots of dribblers on the team. So we want to encourage that to happen. Finally, in transition, uh, counter press and counter. Again, we know high pressing system. We want to slow the pace down when we play it out from the back. We like to take our time. If you look at the goal kicks of the team, usually they will put it down. They'll take their time. They'll let the players come onto them. They adjust and understand the situation of are they going to press high? Are they not going to press high? Can we play out? Can we not play out? They usually take their time playing out of the back. They don't rush it forward, so we want to slow it down, encourage the time to take the passes. We want to take short kicks. We want our goalkeeper to play it short to one of the center backs. We always want to see that. If you look at a lot of their goal kicks, we obviously you see see the one clip we showed, but you'll almost always see Hinkapi or Tapsoba or Kawasu or someone like that. One of them is a little wider in the to then Grimaldo usually usually on the right sided one. Then Grimaldo's on the left side. Then you have the right, the right, the central center back and the left sided center back on either side of the box. And then you have the goalkeeper. He passes it short to one of them, and they kind of play between the three of them before they advance. Happens so often. So we want to encourage the short kicks. Finally, out of possession, high press line of engagement, higher defensive line, preventing short goalkeeper distribution. Again, they press really high. You'll see that you saw that in the clip. Step up more. We want the line to be aggressive and step up. We don't want to get stuck in because they are one of the lower tackler sides. We have encouraged, we have tackle harder on the few players that will tackle harder, but we don't want the others to be encouraged. And stay on feet didn't work at all. It just let them be really lackadaisical and they weren't aggressive enough because we still want them to make tackles, but just to be more intelligent. So that's what I found worked better, leaving it off. And finally, much more often trigger press. It's a really aggressive pressing team. We want them to press very high, very aggressively at the slightest bit of chance they get. So. That is Leverkusen tactic. I know I talked a lot more in the tactical overview and how things went, but there are key things I want to show because, again, this is a tactic that lots of people are going to do. Lots of you will have seen people do, and I just want to show you how much detail and importance I went into making this one. This one took me way longer than I wanted to, 
but I, I just had to get it right. I had to get all of this stuff right. It was bothering me that I couldn't get the possession and the goals at the same time together in the way that I wanted it to work. I There might have been way other things I should have tried or should have done, but for me, I kind of ran out of time. I'm recording this Monday night. This comes out Tuesday morning. Um, it's annoying, but I have time frames and deadlines. I have to get stuff done. So it's just one of those things that's tough, and I just, I it didn't work how I wanted, so... It's what it is. It's very, very close. I think if I had a few more days, this would be perfect for you guys. I think it's slightly off of what I want, but overall, I'd say it's 90% of the way there in terms of hitting the marks, in terms of the way goals are scored, in terms of the way the team sets up. It's the out of possession shape, in possession shape, the passing networks, the uh, players who are getting the goals, getting the assists. There's so much right with this. It's just that slight bit off that I need a little more to do that would make the big difference, and that's kind of all it is there. So, it's it's annoying, but that's how it is. So I hope you guys did enjoy it, though, because I, I, I do think it's a great tactic. It's brilliant. I really suggest you use it. Um, I think you'll have a lot of success using it. So stuff to be cons tough to consider. Well, everyone, I hope you guys did enjoy today's tactic. Now, I know I did say it is only about like a 90% perfect tactic, and I do stand by that statement. I don't think it's my best tactic yet. I think there's still a lot of things that could have been slightly different and adjusted to make it more of the system, but it hits on so many, so many... Things that are good I looked on here. Tons of chances through dribbles, chances through cutbacks. Heavily reliant on central progression central progression until the final third of the pitch where they look to get it wide. Look to hit uh hit through balls into space down the left wing. Wing actually the most crucial part of the system. Like there's so many things that it hits on that I get that are right up there. You saw in the stats that I looked at here, you see all that stuff like that. It's nailing it right on the money in terms of this the stuff that I see in real life that is happening with Chabi. Not Chabi. Chabi Alonso's tactics and what we've recreated in the system are almost nigh on spot on in so many different ways in terms of where we rank in the league for stuff, where stuff is happening. I couldn't be happier. Possession irks me. It irks me a lot. I didn't get it. But it's how things go. Not everything is going to be the most perfect thing. This is a video game. It's not the same. We're not playing every game. We're not encouraging the team to slow the pace down, to take their time on the ball every single time, speeding up when it needs to, making the slight adjustments each game, which you can see Chavi doing, Chavi doing constantly not changing out the players and positions every time. Like there's a lot that goes into this. That I think would be a lot better if I managed every game, but I want to submit because I want to find the most general style of how everyone does generally. And I want the AI to do it on its own. So not everything's going to be perfect. It sucks, but I hold my hands up and say, it's not the most perfect tactic I've made, but I think it's really close about 90% of the way there. So feel free to adjust it, make some slight changes and see if you get the right success with it. Um, Again, though, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. Remember to like and subscribe. Hope you at least enjoyed the tactical analysis, which is kind of a thing that I think is the best. I think this one nailed on the money with it. We got loads in the notebook. We got loads of stuff that I wrote down here, tons of things. Um, the, I, I nailed the tactical analysis. That I'm happy with. <laughs> the tactic, eh, not so much. Um, all those things are great. So I hope you guys did enjoy it. Remember to like and subscribe. If you want more tactics, hit the notification bell. Uh, we have, no, we have normal saves coming out and stuff too. I hope you guys just loved it all. have enjoyed it all. It's been great. Um, who is next? I don't have it written down. I, I took all my stuff down from in front of me and made it on the computer. Now I don't know who's next. Uh, we will pull this up one moment. Who is next? Who is next? Who is next? Ah, uh, where is this? I didn't bookmark this. No, I didn't bookmark <laughs> My own, my own, uh, my own tactic sheet. Ah, it's, uh, who is it? Uh, the next one is Philip Clint and Rangers. That's the next tactic for you guys. That's the one that is coming on Sunday through too much request. Philip Clint's Rangers side. So hopefully you guys are looking forward to that one, uh, because I know I am, even though I couldn't remember what it is, but it'll be fun. I'm excited to do a team in Scotland. I don't think I've ever done a tactic test or even played with a team in scotland before so that'll kind of be neat for me so it'll be a fun one so hope you guys dude enjoy and i'll be sure to catch you guys in the next one where we take a look at philip glenn's ranger side